I'm going to do a video, a really a kid's video, and I'll show how this clock kit is assembled. Now it is a pricey little fellow, $14. And you'll have to buy a soldering iron and a roll of solder. Maybe a pair of reverse acting tweezers, Phillips screwdriver, a little nipper. Don't get the flush cut kind. Get the kind of rounded bottom. And needle nose pliers. Actually, the roll of solder is probably the most expensive part of this. First this is a perfect first time project for a 12 or 14 year old. Sometimes younger if they're mature and they want to learn how things go together. Oh, and the battery is not included. So you'll have to find a battery. And what kind of battery is it? I don't know what kind of battery it is. Other than the fact it's 3 volts. Let's take a look at the contents of this clock kit. First of all, we have a circuit board and some instructions. Looks like we have two dips and two dip sockets, which is good. Power cable. Some hardware. Some more hardware. Lots of small components. A uh, what is it, 1602? A 1602A display. We'll leave that in the package. And the case. Now at some point, this is clear plastic, but it's covered with protective paper. Set the hardware aside for the time being. It's got the board and the component layout. I'll take this and see if we have a what a detailed whether there anything of value here. So we have no assembly instructions. We have mechanical assembly. We have a caution about the thermistor and the uh, photoresistor and a thermistor. So everything goes on here. It looks like no surprises at all. A little pair of side cutters. We'll start with the leaded components first. And exactly, we'll start with the resistors. I prefer to cut this paper off. Then 
the amount right here where it says 10k, 10k, 10k. And so then the leads like this. Make sure the colors are facing upward. Put the leads in. See how it falls down against the surface. A pair of pointed pliers. Just tug them outward. Repeat that two more times. Make sure the resistors are down firmly. Tug the leads apart. Now that we have leads sticking down below the board, you'll know what this is all about. It allows me to set it down and not squash the leads. We have some little round capacitors here. We have to look at them. Okay, that one says 22. And that one says 22. as does that one. So we'll put them in the holes with the writing facing towards us. Mark C2 22P Tug the leads apart. E one twenty two P and we have one more. I don't see offhand where that goes. We have the crystal, that's a little silver cylinder, two wires on it. So we'll spread those wires apart a little bit. It appears to be unmarked, so we just stick the wires in the holes. And then, not pushing it down tight, we'll bend it over. Like that. And we'll bend the wires to hold it in place. Remember, we're going to turn this thing over like that. Soldering iron has been preheated. This is lead solder. Uh, 25 thousandths of an inch in diameter. It contains flux. We've got the soldering iron set at 750 degrees.
Don't cut the leads too close. It's better not to have flush cutting tools here. You may actually nip off the joint. Should wear eye cover in addition to holding these little pieces, they tend to fly. Inspect your work if it doesn't look like it's been soldered. Reheat it. Perhaps add some solder. This one's the electrolytic. Here's one. It's labeled 104, I'll bet. And it is 104. We'll make the writing point this way. There we go. Now anything that sticks up above these, you know, a component like this one, for example, These blocks don't do any good. So this is an electrolytic capacitor. One side of it is marked with a white band and a minus sign. See how the circle is divided in half? One side has this white marking on it. That is designed to correspond to this white marking. Then the other half has a plus in it. Well, normally, not all the time, the longer of the two leads is positive. Just stick it in. Put it down close, not the whole way. And the leads again. Now this time we have to be a little bit careful or we'll bend the capacitor. But that's okay. Because we have this thing called LS1. And that's the sounder. And it will have one side marked with a positive. Now you got to be careful because once you tear this piece of paper off you'll lose the positive reference. Anyway it goes in here with the positive indicator going up that way. Some of these leads are damaged or bent, or perhaps the whole spacing is not perfect. Anyway, see how high this is? I can lay this down and not move the capacitor. See how it lays there?
Best to only stick three or four components through and solder them. Otherwise you'll get, end up with a forest growing here and you just get confused about what you have soldered, what you haven't soldered. All right, that'll be the end of part one. I hope you come back for the next part. Thank you.